Today, I'm coming to you from our smart technology room and our telehealth room at the Assistive Technology Center. Well, welcome to module seven. Last week, you were introduced to control interfaces in chapter six of Essentials of Assistive Technologies. You should now have a better understanding of control interfaces and the anatomical control sites that an individual uses to interact with the control interfaces. This week, we will focus on computer access as described in Chapter 7 of Essentials of Assistive Technologies. Chapter 7 applies the concepts of user inputs and control interfaces to the activity of computer access. Essentially, we will investigate the numerous interfaces an individual can use to control a computer and the numerous outputs a computer can generate to provide feedback to the individual. For example, considering a computer, the control interface is typically the keyboard and the mouse. The output is typically a visual display on a monitor. However, another control interface could be a microphone that uses automatic speech recognition to translate the spoken word to text within an email message. Another user output could be speech to text software that turns written text into speech, into synthesized speech. Individuals with a visual impairment, for example, low vision, may find text to speech software very useful. I recommend checking out the accessibility features built into your own computer. I provided links to the accessibility websites for Microsoft, Windows, Apple, Mac OS X, and Google Chrome in the module overview. As was the case- Sorry, I can't help with that yet. So you can disregard the reference to uh, some of the smart technology that we use here. As was the case with last week's material, the easiest way to learn the material is to consider how you access a computer on a daily basis. How do you access a device? Is it with your hands, your feet, your voice, or another anatomical control site? What is the control interface? Is it a keyboard and mouse? If you had to use a different anatomical control site, what would you use? And what impact would it have on a selection of a control interface? This week, we have a special guest joining us. I interviewed Megan Fogel, instructional designer in the Ohio State University's Office of Distance Education and E-Learning. She has a wealth of information on online accessibility and design. She describes her professional path to her current position as an instructional designer focusing on accessibility. She also discusses the importance of developing accessible software and hardware from the ground up, not just as a patch, a fix, or an afterthought. I think you will find her responses just as interesting and refreshing as I did and learn how the university operationalizes accessibility features within its educational materials. I hope you enjoy module seven on computer access and reach out to me if you have any questions.